Hello, hello, we're reading another chapter of Good Old Dr. Stone. It's chapter 143. They have begun their world-spanning journey to gather resources to make the rocket first step America. But what I want to see is not fast travel. I'd like to see maybe some struggles of the journey, some, some peril, perhaps. I'm not really sure what. Uh, maybe some kind of psychologically intense things. It's sort of interesting. Forgive me for this little tangent, but I, I find this uh, this sort of prospect quite interesting. Let's say we have an arc that's about people kind of going stir crazy on the boat, or maybe <clears throat> because of some deficiency in the resources they brought, the supplies. There's there's some conflict. There's uh, you know some tension and stuff. That's a perfectly natural arc to write when you're having your characters journey across the Pacific. Um, and I think it could be extremely interesting, kind of how the different characters' personalities like emerge in this sort of thing. But it would be very different than pretty much any of the other arc premises because it, it would put the fault squarely at the feet of Senku, right? Like it would be down to his poor preparedness, his underestimation of how psychologically rough this would be, things of that nature. Um, and then it's like... Like, what? Would we have, like, a mutiny? Like, <laughs> would he be, like, drawn into this human level of the conflict? And I think that could be quite interesting, to have an arc that's motivated by the fact that Senkyu sometimes doesn't quite get people, that he, he kind of underestimates what will be challenges for them, that he expects them to behave more rationally than they do. Things like that, I think, could be really interesting as a direction for this series to go. But at the same time, I can't really see them doing it. There's kind of like an infallibility that we like about Sinku that, that seems essential to how the plot functions. So I don't know. I don't know. How are they going to survive this journey? What's it going to be like? Ooh, they made a, a wax cylinder voice recorder. This is a very, very early technology for recording uh, sounds and stuff. There's still some of these that still exist, wax cylinders from like, the early 1800s, I think, or the, even the late 1700s? No, I think early 1800s. I don't know. Um, but they've been around for a long, long time. And <laughs> you can watch this terrifying, heartbreaking video on YouTube where uh, a historian is showing these off. And they're, like, playing a few of them. And the historian breaks one of them on camera. Isn't that crazy? Anyways, check it out. Um, but, yeah, basically the cylinder rotates. And just like you would in printing a vinyl, but with kind of like easier to access technology. A needle vibrates based on the sound and makes an indentation. And then later you can rotate it back, have the needle go along the groove and vibrate out the, the initial recording sound. It's brilliant. Okay. And from Stone Age tools to a spacecraft will be a huge project going around the world to gather resources. Nice. Allow me to introduce the crew members aboard the ship. Woo! Fun! This is so fun! So they're bringing her this time, I guess. I think they're just leveling up the crew in general. And she's probably a good judge of who should get revived, who should they should seek out to revive and such. Ah, Tsukasa. Once we revive scores of people, guns may come back into play. Some people will once again scheme to exploit and profit off others. I cannot allow that. They will not defy science with blood. Yes, that is now my role in all this. Comrade. Um, <laughs> and I, I feel like they're really pushing that there will be a conflict, perhaps between Tsukasa and Suiru, on this subject, and maybe spurred on by some later depetrified person. United States, I lived there for 10 billion years. This foreign girl's shirt are cute. Also, they've got that Statue of Liberty. I wonder if that copper lady is still standing. <laughs> the insincere mentalist. <laughs> um, oh, it would be nice to see if the Statue of Liberty is still up. Then they can do the Planet of the Apes scenes. You blew it up! Damn you! Damn you all to hell! That's major spoilers for Planet of the Apes, by the way. I'm sorry, but I feel like everybody knows that twist. That it was Earth all along. They got mad at me because I stowed away on the ship before. Okay, I thought so. As a reward for doing so good on the island, I got permission to come aboard this time. Seems questionable, but okay. She is a great detective. So she's going to be really helpful on this trip, too. Actually, never seen you not being helpful. Aww. OK. 
Tasky, the godly artisan. My precious record arches are running right now. I think carves sounds into a lacquered wooden tube. The lacquer makes the recording process nice and smooth. Pretty inspired design from yours truly. Whoa! That's cool, because that does exist. Um, I guess it's lacquer. I thought it was just wax. But I don't really know the difference between wax and lacquer and all that stuff. But at any rate, nice job, Chrome. And independently recreating a, a very useful historic design. It's told to aid you people, and I intend to obey that order. <laughs> yeah, she's just doing all of this because Soyuz told her to. <laughs> Can you give us your personal thoughts? You get along with Kinro, our other hard headed crew member. Care to comment? Hey, are they trying to set up Kirisame and Kinro? Disapprove. Kinro x Kinro. Kirisame x Kohaku. Only gay pairings allowed. Suhiru confirmed by. <laughs> I love it. Hmm. <laughs> have to train harder so as not to lay behind. Ginro. How would he fare without Matsukaze tending to his every whim? <laughs> Matsukaze, the revenge driven samurai. Master, Master Ginro, the spitting likeness of my lord. Tend to his every whim, you say nonsense. You carry him when his legs fail. <laughs> Bad crabs right before we ship off. He's the super sleazy warrior. <laughs> oh, oh, that's hilarious. He was trying to get out of it. That's so funny. He was trying to get out of it. And Matsukaze literally just hoisted him up on board. Worry not, my lord. <laughs> we will have the journey that you seek. <laughs> ah, see, the boredom's killing me. How many more weeks of this? We we're we're probably gonna get our little uh, stir crazy ship arc in some capacity. I'm I'm very curious how this is gonna go. <gasps> oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Oh, just the romance of the sea. Oh, so huge and boundless, and again, just the incorporation of photography, photography, and, and those sorts of techniques in the series. It's just it's awe inspiring. The Pacific Ocean. <gasps> I sailed across the Atlantic before, never the Pacific. Uh, when I was 11, my dad wanted to take me on a trip to England. Um, he had a friend that was living there. Uh, and there was some sort of like work thing he was going to do. I don't really remember. At any rate, we decided to take a boat. You can rent uh, free crew rooms aboard um, freight vessels. So we, we each took a room. It's pretty cool. Went across the Atlantic. <sighs> Stormy seas. This hard work is killing me. <laughs> How many more weeks of this? <laughs> and both times, Ukiya exasperated. <laughs> 70 days. 40 days. Whoa. That's not... Is this how long they think they're going to take the cross? The sea? Thank you, Nursui. Bad fight. Fighting is no good! Taiju, the ultimate cheat code level mediator. Not that you really need cheat code level strength to stop these two nerds from fighting. Discussion. Got a right big off. We are fighting. <laughs> they dodge his peacemaking attack this time. <laughs> hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I feel like there's a pun in Japanese that we lost here. Where, where he goes, dis? Did Sanky diss you? Probably makes more sense in Japanese. At any rate, because it's like what, Taiju doesn't worth, know the word discussion, huh? Arguing over the route to the Americas. I can guess something, right to the point. We shipped out for Tokyo, and our goal is America. San Francisco to be exact. I've been there! I've been to Japan, too. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, the question is, what's the shortest route? Ah, oh, ha, ha. This is actually something I've thought about before. I remember as a kid, I was really fascinated by this idea. That because there's the curvature of the Earth, if you go straight across, you're just doing a grand circle. You're, you're moving purely uh, latitudinally. But if you curve up and then go along 
where it's narrower, like you do this sort of like parabolic thing. Could it be faster? Maybe, maybe. <sighs> that straight route follows a rum line. Pick a latitude and follow it straight across. It's the simplest way to go. Use for voyages throughout history. Going that way, it'll take us 70 days. So that was Suiru's hypothesis. But Senkyu has other ideas. So the actual correct answer, the shortest road is this. Go up. Just your own eyes and check out the globe. They both, this is uh, good, this is good. This is like how you should really do it. <laughs> both use pieces of rope. Who's got the longer rope? Like a detour in the flat map, but it's actually shorter since you place it on a sphere. And that's how planes go too. They arc up. Hmm. The actual shortest way is the great circle sailing route. I said the wrong thing before. I said you sail on a great circle, but that's not right. You sail on a line of uh, latitude. Sailing on a great circle means that, yeah, you, you find uh, a, 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 the full diameter circle of the Earth and you take that sort of trajectory. I think they'll explain it more, so I don't know why I'm trying to explain it and then probably making more mistakes <laughs> or using the wrong terminology. Um, at any rate, if we take this shortcut, we'll hit the U.S. in just 40 days. From later, 70 days. Great circle sailing demands constant judgment of bearing based on current position. It's the toughest road you can chart and be a huge burden on our sailors. Great circle route. As crappy as this is, we got old Professor GPS on the ship of science. And linking up with Ruri and everyone in Japan, my way is 10%, 10 billion percent doable. 10 percent doable. So yeah, you can use like pseudo sonar. You keep adjusting based on uh, the, the direction that the signal is coming back from Japan. And then you can much more easily determine, is this helpful? <laughs> These gestures I'm doing. This is Japan. This is your ship. So you know that you're always supposed to be doing it such that you make uh, some adjustment in the angle from Japan. Like you, you know that if it changes too much or it doesn't change enough, then you're straying from this specific course. Ah. I have some training, but our sailors are still a gang of rank amateurs. I'm sure arguments won't conquer the Pacific. This will take 70 days. I know this here, I'm just being realistic. Am I wrong? The yellow dead corn. It takes 70 days. We won't make it in time. We can arrive in 40 days. Slide right into autumn. Safe. It'll be a bit past right, but that'll save us time drying it out. Just make it just in time to produce the alcohol we need for revival fluid. After a seven-day leisurely trip, we hit winter and time's up. Then we're stuck in the U.S., wasting a whole year of valuable time in the fight against wine man. It's got to be 40 days. As a scientist, I'm just being logical. Is that so wrong? Well, sounds like they're both right. Hmm. It's tough to decide. Ooh, and again. The little lizard <laughs> sneaks in with some sort of plan. Okay, so how can they settle this? Because it's not just a, a question of which will happen. It's a question of what route are we going to take. What's funny to me is that it seems quite realistic that they'd only be having this conflict now. Because it's something I'm sure they both just assumed that they would do the method they were planning. That it was like common sense and why would you do it any other way? So <laughs> they're both uh, suddenly realizing now into the voyage, probably after several days, that they actually have... Very, very different ideas about where they're going to be going. So how do you resolve this? How do you determine which way the ship goes? Because, hmm, if you mess up the great, like, it's it just comes down to whether or not you feel like you can do it, right? Because I guess the logic is if you mess up the great sail, the great circle navigation, then you're going to be even later you're still going to have to spend the whole year. It feels like there's no downside to trying... Actually, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm totally Team Senkyu here. There's no downside. Just try sailing in the Great Circle. If you get there uh, early because you did it, hooray. You can you can make the ethanol. 
If you get there late because you screwed up the navigation, and maybe it takes even longer than 7B days, as long as you still have the resources for that additional time... <gasps> Ooh, maybe that's the thing. Maybe Suiru thinks, Rusui thinks that if they take too long trying to do the Great Circle navigation, they're going to run out of resources? Okay, that's another factor entirely. But I was about to say, like, if you show up late and it's already winter, then whatever, you would have had to wait that winter out had you done longitudinal sailing anyways, or latitudinal sailing anyways. So I think, is that the argument Gen will present? That really it comes down to, will we be able to try to take this shortcut and get there in time to not run out of resources? Hmm. They're both correct. Consider me squarely on the team. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'm no fan of art. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I thought he was going to have some sort of scheme that he was going to somehow subtly sway and manipulate the argument such that they were both satisfied. It looked like he was uh, ready to engage on that front. But then he's like, nah, I don't want to work hard. Let's do Ruby's plan. <laughs> Thank you, Sai. Why don't I revive this? Yeah, 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 yeah. I have to double everyone's rations. No prob there. Stan, we do realize that doing so will have the maximum possible length of our voyage. So if those 10 days. Can't go any lower than that, so if you keep insisting, we'll have to stand up for our crew's rights. And it means opposing you, Senku. 20 days. I'm not sure why he says you'll have to double everyone's rations. Like, we'll have to double them insofar as, because it's such hard work, it's going to require all this constant re-navigation and constant re-rigging of sails and stuff that people will need more food, I guess is what he's saying. And thus, we'll have less time. Okay, so it is coming down to, sure, it would be great to get there faster, but in doing so, will we run out of food before we even get there? either based on screwing up or whatever. Okay, so the conflict is reaching ahead. And I like that Rusui is saying, I'm standing up for my crew's rights. Like, that's what he cares about. Capitalism with a human face. I have my criticisms, but there's the human face. It's not like they're lying about that. Like they do in real life, they just lie. But here, <laughs> Rusui is uh, he's putting his money where his mouth is, so to speak. Ooh. A showdown between Senkyu and Rusui. <laughs> they both start doing shouted battle action pose. Th those aren't the right characters. <laughs> These two nerds. <laughs> what are they going to do? <laughs> uh, how could this play out? This, it can't possibly be a real battle. That would just be absurd. Even the idea of like a stand-in battle where they get Tsukasa and Matsukaze or something seems ridiculous. Ooh, damn, the suits, Ukiyo, the dealer. I like that Ukiyo kind of has this role where he's he's very trusted, very wise, um, and has like a lot of kind of decision-making agency that he's very respected for. But he only seems to end up in these kind of like, he has to play like the straight man. He has to kind of like put up with people's shenanigans and stuff. It's, it's a very endearing character um, to kind of just have emerge slowly and naturally like this. And, and this sort of role, I think, is perfect for him. But he's the dealer. What game are they going to play? It the, the situation they're in is kind of analogous to Blackjack, where it's like you, you need to kind of balance how gutsy you want to be. Uh, with like probabilities of like failure and and what is an unacceptable failure and what is just like an acceptable level of failure, so on and so forth. Um, it has that same kind of estimating and then weighing of risk and stuff. So maybe they'll play blackjack. A nice simple game too. So I assume it's going to be much more about the psychology of the players than the actual mechanics of the game. Ah, oh, but we're going Fukumoto here, gambling. It's really like this. They're facing off with poker. Ooh, with poker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny that Senkyu wore the suit too, but Rusui has a point. To show the audience this is a formal affair. That would be more inclined to obey the winner. It will obviously be me. <laughs> Why, you ask? 
Ooh, Gen hops on Team Rusui. Having Gen on your side. It's quite mental. This is 10 billion percent gonna cheat. <laughs> Ooh, Kohaku. Shop out for moving objects, so keep your both your peepers glued to Gen's sticky fingers. Ooh, this is gonna be so much fun. Gen trying to cheat. Kohaku trying to catch him. Senkyu and Rusui weighing out their respective ideologies over the card table. Senkyu may be playing purely probabilistically. Rusui showing the, the value of playing conservatively and prioritizing some sort of absolute of health above all else. It's looking like there's a lot of fun to be had here. This is great. And this is a fantastic way to kind of pass the time during this Ocean Voyage arc. We have something substantial happen. It has those elements of in-group conflict that we were talking about before. It's not the full-on, I'm losing my mind because we're stuck out at sea. Only, only Ginro will go through that. <laughs> All right. Okay, this is going to be pretty exciting. I'm, uh, <laughs> <I did. laughs> this is the last sort of premise for an arc I would have expected from this series, but I love it. Okay. Let's, uh, we have two more chapters before we're caught up. Pretty good. We're getting there. So please look forward to those. Bye-bye for now.